In the last class, uh, we looked at the experiment 2D nosy that is nuclear overhauser effect spectroscopy and how it is useful in determining structures of molecules and we also saw some practical uh, uh, matters related to this experiment such as how the intensity varies with distance and the mixing time uh, how it should be chosen. Uh, one problem with 2D nosy uh, is that it does not work for many molecules in a particular size range and what do we do in such cases? If nosy cannot be used, how can we determine the structures of those molecules? So, there is an alternative experiment which we can use and that is what we are going to see in this class and that is known as ROSI. So, as you can see in this slide, the 2D ROSI means it is rotating frame nosy. So, the word is just in the word rotating frame is there and rotating frame overhauser effect spectroscopy. So, this is an alternative to 2D nosy experiment and so let us see how this works and why is it required. So, in this experiment, so if you recollect the previous uh, class, we looked at how the nosy experiment is done. Uh, that is done by applying 3 pulses. So, what fun was 90 degree pulse, then we had T1 evolution, then we applied one more 90 degree pulse, brought the magnetization to minus Z and then during the mixing period, it was allowed to interact with the another spin and after this transfer, the second spin was detected by apply, applying one more 90 degree pulse and then it evolved. So, in this experiment rho z, we do it in a different manner. So, here what we do is we apply a 90 degree pulse, then allow the spin A to evolve that is the same approach what we saw in the case of toxi. Then you mix the magnetization by applying what is called as a spin lock. So, this is nothing but a weak irradiation applied for a duration of this time 200 to 500 milliseconds. And after that during this period again similar to what happens in nosy, the magnetization from one spin is transferred or polarization from one spin is transferred to the second spin which carries with it the information of the chemical shift during T1. So, the second spin when it is now comes to the x y plane remember here if you look carefully we have started from x axis pulse. So, the magnetization is in the y direction here and it remains y throughout there is no need for another pulse to bring the magnetization to y. So, in NMR remember we always apply 190 degree pulse to bring a magnetization from z axis to y axis. But if the magnetization is already along x or y, we do not need to do anything, we just need to directly start detecting that signal by using the detector and that is called FID. So, we do not detect here, we just allow the spins to evolve in chemical shift and they start moving according to the chemical shift frequency and when the intensity at any point here is modulated means connected or uh, related to the chemical shift frequency value and that intensity uh, and is transferred to the next spin based on its uh, because of the spin lock here and that is because of the through space interaction and after that interaction is over then the second spin now which has got the energy or magnetization from the first spin starts uh, moving and that is gives a second spin chemical shift. So, that set two spins are connected to each other correlated by this manner. So, now question is if you look again if you recall this is exactly the same as a toxic spectrum a uh, toxic pulse sequence. So, the question is what was different here why is it similar to a toxic? The reason is yes, it is very similar to toxic. In fact, it is like a toxic itself, but the only difference is the power levels are slightly lower than a toxic and the time duration is very long compared to toxic. In a toxic, we use typically around 60 to 80 milliseconds, and this is about 3 4 times bigger, longer, it can go all the way up to 500 milliseconds. So, that is the difference as far as nosy and toxic is concerned, but the picture the pulse program like this sequence looks exactly same. So, now question is why are we doing this rosy experiment at all? Why does not the nosy help always? So, what happens is there is the theory which we will not go into detail in this course, but the theory says that suppose by accidentally you are molecule is such 
that the product the multiplication of omega into tau c what is omega? Omega is comes from your spectrometer frequency and tau c is the rotational correlation time of the molecule and if you recollect we saw in the previous classes that it is related to molecular weight divided by 2 in kilo daltons and the value is typically in nanoseconds. So, this product if it happens to be close to 1 then the NOE effect it goes to 0 that means even if the mol atoms are close in space you will not get any cross peak between them because there is no way that they can transfer to each other and the reason is the transfer efficiency has become 0 because of this spurious or strange phenomenon which is well explained in theory of course, it is not that strange, but it is interesting that at this point you will get a 0. So, typically this will happen if your molecular weight let us say is 1000 the molecule which you are analyzing and if you are working at this frequency 400 megahertz. Okay. So, at that frequency omega is how much is 2 into pi 2 pi into frequency. So, just not directly frequency here you have to use a 2 pi and multiply with the tau c for this and if you recollect the math the tau c for this is going to be 0 0.5 nanoseconds. So, 0 0.5 nanoseconds into 2 into pi into 400 if you calculate at room temperature. So, remember this is a very important point because our temperature matters here we saw that earlier that if tau c temperature goes up the tau c changes and temperature goes down the tau c will change. So, based on this at temperature you will see that for this particular case you may get around 1 1.2 and that means the efficiency of nosy for this molecule at that frequency at that temperature is very not very good. So, if you are forced to work at under those conditions those spectrometer and that molecule uh, you will have to try an alternative experiment and that is why we use rosy. So, rosy is the information wise is very similar or same as nosy which means that similar to nosy the intensity of the cross peaks is proportional or inversely proportional to the r to the power 6 where r is the distance between two atoms. So, similar to what we do in nosy we choose a mixing time and we look at the intensity uh, we measure or uh, calculate the intensity of the cross peaks from the spectrum and based on that we calculate the distance. So, uh, for example, 1000 if you say one more thing in if we look at it a typical amino acid residue in a protein and amino acid is typically we say the average is 100 or 110. So, that means this will correspond to a 9 amino acid protein peptide. So, if your peptide is 9 10 amino acids and if you are working at 400 megahertz at room temperature then there is highly likely that you will not get a good nosy or maybe not nothing at all. So, therefore, you should use this experiment. So, that means if how will the spectrum look if the nosy effect is 0. So, if you think about it so imagine that in the experiment which we saw in the last class you have we try we expect a transfer of polarization from spin A to spin B, but if spin A does not transfer completely to B what we saw is we get what is called as diagonal peak. A diagonal peak is a peak which comes because of incomplete magnetization transfer. So, therefore, if you have a 0 transfer nothing is transferred. So, all the peaks will be in the diagonal because nothing is transferred to anything else. So, therefore, in your nosy spectrum if you see at just only a diagonal peak and you do not see any cross peak it means that your your problem is because of this particular reason. Okay. So, therefore, one should now concentrate look at either change the magnetic field or that means I should go to let us say 600 megahertz if I have in my laboratory or you change the temperature because remember temperature also will help you to come out of this condition by changing the temperature will affect the tau c or you must basically look at some other molecular weight. So, this is the way why rosy is important because it overcomes all this problem and you do not have to worry about nosy and directly record a rosy spectrum. Now, in a rosy spectrum the spin exchange means the polarization transfer takes place during the period known as spin lock period. See this word spin lock period is coming because of this there is an isotropic mixing 
that is what we saw in toxic. So, during this period there is a transfer going on. So, therefore, remember if you recollect we I just now as we discussed toxic experiment is also exactly same as uh, rosy. So, therefore, one has to optimize spin lock so that you do not start seeing toxic peaks or to artifacts or toxic type of problems in nosy. nosy. So, these are practical aspects uh, which are important to know because toxic and rosy have same pulse program. So, whatever, but remember as I said in toxic we of course, use very short mixing time whereas, in rosy is little longer. So, this is an experimental spectrum how it looks. So, you can see here that there is uh, a cross peaks and you can see there is a diagonal peak and there is this cross peaks. So, red color. So, you see one thing if you notice immediately the cross peaks are opposite in sign compared to diagonal and chemical exchange. So, what is chemical exchange we will worry about it little later when we come to the advanced NMR topics we will cover chemical exchange, but what is currently we have to worry about is this peak the diagonal. So, you see the diagonal is black in color that means, it is let us say positive and the red is opposite to diagonal peak means opposite in color because it is negative. So, the cross peak and diagonal peak have a negative phase relationship between each other and that is why we say that it is very nice because you can immediately figure out any peak which is opposite to diagonal is the actual cross peak which we need to worry about. There is another very uh, beneficial or useful feature in rosy which is not present in nosy is as follows that remember we discuss what is called as spin diffusion peak. A spin diffusion peak arises because two spins A and B are not closer than are, are farther than 6 Armstrongs or 7 Armstrongs that means, they could be 10 Armstrongs, but still I may end up seeing a cross peak in a spectrum between A and B which is not correct. I do not expect A and B to show a cross peak, but it is showing a cross peak. If you look at it in other way if a person does not know the structure that it should be 5 or 10 Armstrong or so, the person may think that A and B are now close to 5 to 6 or less than 5 to 6 Armstrongs because I am seeing a peak in the nosy spectrum. So, this will lead to a wrong structure, wrong structure because in reality they are about 8 Armstrongs, but in practice using my equations and using my uh, the idea that intensity is proportional to power 6 1 by r power 6, I may end up interpreting that these two peaks these two atoms are less than 5 to 6 Armstrongs. Okay. So, this is a misinterpretation and can very much lead to a wrong structure. So, why did it happen? This happened because A and B were not close in space, but there was a third spin suppose we call it as A prime or C which connected A and B because first that magnetization went from A to C and from C to B during the long mixing time. So, if the mixing time is not chosen appropriately I may end up with this kind of artifacts or this kind of problem. So, in a nosy there is no way that a given peak we can say whether it is a direct nosy peak because of less than 6 Armstrong distance or it is coming because of spin diffusion. Very difficult to say unless of course, the one option we use is to vary the mixing time. So, let us say you record your spectrum at different mixing times. So, if you record a spectrum at different mixing times remember we saw that the intensity is proportional to the mixing time, I mean it increases with mixing time to some extent. So, therefore, if the intensity of a cross peak it keeps on increasing as I vary the mixing time then that particular peak I can say is coming from direct nosy effect. But if the intensity of peak does not vary with mixing time it, it decreases then I will say it is an indirect nosy effect that is spin diffusion peak. So, for a spin diffusion peak the intensity does not increase proportionately with mixing time that is one way in nosy to rule out whether a peak is coming because of direct nosy or through spin diffusion, but the disadvantage now is that you need to record several two dimensional nosy spectrum with different mixing time. And remember each 2 D spectrum takes about hours to record a few hours 
and therefore, if you want to do several 2D experiments, you may end up spending uh, days, one day or two days just for this purpose. But in case of rosy, what happens is the rosy, your red color which is shown here is red color is a direct cross peak and this is diagonal peak. So, if you have a spin diffusion peak, then that will come as black color which will be the same as the diagonal. So, interestingly the diffusion peak will now can be distinguished from the uh, di uh, direct cross peak because there will be a change in the sign or change in the color of the peak. So, based on that one can now distinguish and say confidently that look this is a spin diffusion peak and something else and some other peak is a actual cross peak. So, therefore, we can focus we, we can then when we analyze or interpret the intensities one can then ignore those black peaks and focus only on the red peaks. So, this is one uh, way to look at speed diffusion, but of course, there is another uh, thing in rosy is that exchange peak that and also in nosy an exchange peak happens also in nosy. So, nosy and nosy both show a very interesting feature which is a very important dynamics information in many systems in org in chemistry. We will look at it as we said in the as I said in the advanced section, but let us ignore. So, keep in mind that in diffusion in rosy the spin diffusion peaks that is multi step nosy peaks are opposite compared to direct one step nosy peak and therefore, it is very easy to distinguish. But then the question you may ask is why do not we then do rosy every time? Why do we ever have to do nosy? The reason is because of this factor here. If you see this diagram picture here, the magnetization is in the y axis here x or y and then it remains in x or y for a long duration up to 500 milliseconds and then you detect. So, during this portion of the time it decays decreases because of T 2 relaxation. So, remember T 2 relaxation is all happens in the x y plane and T 1 relaxation happens in the uh, z axis when it magnetization is going to the z axis. So, T 2 relaxation starts playing a big role in this case. So, if my T 2 is short which is typically the case for uh, larger molecules a uh, few let us say a peptide which is 15 amino acids or 20 amino acids as you go increase the number of amino acids or if you look at larger molecules the T 2 effect T 2 is very short. So, by the time you apply this isotropic mixing that is what is called spin lock or a weak RF radiation the spin starts relaxing towards z axis very quickly. So, therefore, the signal intensity when you reach here is very less. So, the overall sensitivity of rho z is less compared to no z. So, only if there is no option uh, for no z rho z is resorted to means people use rho z if in case you are not able to get a good no z, but otherwise no z is still preferred because as far as I control my mixing time properly the spin diffusion is not such a big problem. So, from one if you are experienced then you will know what mixing time one should use and therefore, you do not have to worry about this negative positive and you can analyze a no z which is more sensitive compared to rho z. So, this is things end, end to the rho z part that is the rho z and no z. Uh, we will look at one last two dimensional experiment uh, before we move on to the heteronuclear. So, we will look at one more homonuclear experiment 2 d homonuclear which is known as inadequate again a very interesting acronym and that stands for this particular uh, word which is incredible natural abundance double quantum transition experiment. So, now the name sounds very complicated, but actually the experiment is a very simple experiment it what it means is it, it is what it tries to do is it tries to correlate like any other 2 d the chemical shift of carbon to carbon. Okay. So, remember our focus is now carbon to carbon we have come out of hydrogen. So, this is a typically a carbon carbon correlation experiment and used very frequently in chemistry. Uh, not so much in biological molecules because the sensitivity is of course, very low. So, here what are we trying to do? We are trying to correlate or connect 
two carbon atoms. So, let us see how this happens. So, this I said is a very useful for establishing carbon carbon correlation and uh, that means to like cozy remember in a cozy we saw proton to proton correlation. Similarly, here we try to do carbon to carbon correlation again using J coupling. So, J coupling is a common feature everywhere only through J coupling we can uh, transfer polarization if you want to study like a cozy experiment. Uh, so, it is very useful for natural products and so on, but remember it is C 13 detected means everything is carbon 13 here there is no hydrogen involved proton involved. So, the carbon 13 is a not a very sensitive nucleus because it is natural abundance is very low number 1 100 times less compared to proton number 2 it is 4 times less gyromagnetic ratio it has 4 times smaller gyromagnetic ratio compared to proton. So, these two factors really reduce the sensitivity of carbon if you are studying at natural abundance. So, therefore, this is a very insensitive experiment it requires very long time to record and more sample. Remember uh, one of the slides we saw uh, long back in the theory part where we saw first part which was more of theory we saw that that the sensitivity of NMR is proportional to square root of measurement time and directly proportional to concentration. So, if the sensitivity is very less like this you either need long time or you need more sample or you can use both take longer time with more sample. So, this is one class of experiments which falls under that. So, let us see how this works. So, this is basically as it says here how how what information do you get from inadequate inadequate looks at pairs of doublet cross peaks along the horizontal axis which means that two corresponding carbons are directly connected. So, let us say example suppose this is a carbon atom in this is what is shown here on this x axis here this lines are stick or lines are nothing but peaks of a carbon spectrum. So, remember if you recollect we saw that carbon spectrum looks like single sharp lines because we decouple the hydrogen. So, there is no J coupling to hydrogen which can be seen in a proton carbon 1D spectrum plus carbon spectrum do not have any carbon carbon interaction. So, there is no homonuclear J coupling because neighboring two carbons the very low probability that both of them will be C 13 we saw that it is 1 percent of 1 percent. So, therefore, in a carbon spectrum you will typically see single lines this is not a real spectrum here, but in a reality you will also you will not get very much different from this. So, let us say I have recorded a sample hypothetical we will see a real example in the next slide, but let us say that we have a molecule which has spectrum like this a carbon spectrum or uh, what I am trying to do now is look at the close next connected carbon atom that means neighboring carbon atom. So, let us say let me draw this example. So, let us say I have something like this going on is a molecule. So, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, what is this inadequate experiment doing is trying to connect the neighboring carbons or trying to tell you which peak here this carbon is connected which car this carbon is connected to which other carbon. So, for example, let us say this particular carbon uh, may be this particular peak and then your this particular carbon will become this peak here. So, basically we are trying to form a connection between two neighboring carbon atoms. Okay. So, this is what is shown here. So, let us say we start from 1 some arbitrary peak you are using the word double quantum here. So, let us not worry about what is double quantum for the time being this is more mathematical or we that is why we do not we do not be able to cover this in this course, but for us what matters is just the appearance of peaks. So, you have a carbon peak which is let us say position 1 remember this both axes okay, both side this horizontal vertical axis and horizontally is carbon to carbon. So, both dimensions are carbon. So, but the only thing is in this axis we do not get direct carbon chemical shifts we say that it is a combination of two chemical shifts. 
ok. So, what happens is it is basically a, is a chemical shift here is the chemical shift of 1 some peak 1 plus the chemical shift of its connected peak. So, both these peaks are connected to each other. So, both the chemical shifts you add them together sum of the chemical shift is what you will observe here ok. So, let us say we it this is directly connected to peak number 2. So, it will be in the same line ok. So, then what you do next is you go vertical in this line ok. So, this is basically if you go vertical this position will be 2 plus 3, 2 plus 3 means chemical shift of 2 this 2 plus chemical shift of the next peak 3. So, that is what comes at this position. So, if you go in the horizontal line it is 3 2 plus 3 is this peak and this will be 3 plus 2. So, both are equal. So, they are in the same line. So, 3 plus 2 comes here, but 3 plus 4 comes in the vertical because I have to add this is 3 and I have to add a chemical shift 4. So, there will be addition to that it will come here and then again 3 plus 4 and 4 plus 3 is same. Then comes 4 plus 5. So, 4 plus 5 is comes down why does it come down? It comes down because 5 is on this side and 3 was on that side. So, whenever you go to downfield depends it, it can either increase or decrease or it is always opposite. So, whatever happens to so this chemical shift here is more than this chemical shift or I can reverse the approach I can say this side is less and this side is more it does not matter what matters is that when you go this side it is on one direction and this side is opposite direction. So, from 4 when I go I take this peak to 5 it is coming down because the chemical shift of 4 plus 5 is less compared to chemical shift of 3 plus 4. So, 4 plus 5 comes here and if you go horizontal this is 5 plus 4. So, 5 plus 4, 4 plus 5 is same, but now 5 is connected to 6. So, this 5 is connected to 6. So, 5 plus 6 is different now it goes up and this is 6 plus 5. So, 6 plus 5 and 5 plus 6 are same. Then the 6 is connected to 7, then you go up and see the same the same line the next peak and then go horizontal that is the last peak 7 ok. So, basically what is happening here is we are going from horizontal vertical horizontal vertical. So, when you go on the horizontal line from one atom one peak to another peak we get the neighboring connection information. So, we get two per atoms connected to each other directly through one bond. Then we go up we get second connection we go left we get another connection like that we can walk like this and keep connecting two neighboring carbon atoms and this this vertical will match with this peaks here. So, you have to place your carbon 1D spectrum on the top and then along this line you start looking at those chemical shifts. So, this corresponds to this, this corresponds to this and so on ok. So, let us look at a real concrete example in this case menthol is shown. So, menthol has this structure here you see on this side ok and then you can see that these are the numbers we have put on the carbon atoms. So, let us say you start from 1 which so this assignment which which carbon is which chemical shift has already been known in this molecule. So, therefore, this is just an example. So, suppose you have 1 here atom number 1 remember atom number 1 is directly connected to 2 it is also connected to 6 ok. So, but let us follow one path now let us go from 1 to 2 then 2 next is here now 2 is connected to both 3 as well as 7. So, you see there are 2 peaks here 2 is connected to 3 and we will see later how it is connected to 7. So, first let us see its connection to 3 which has come here. Then from 3 if you go vertical it is 3 again because it is the same line as 3, but now if you go horizontal you get 4. Then you go again vertical along 4 to remain on 4, but next horizontal gives 5. Then you go along vertical to get 5 and then gives you 10 remember 5 to 10. So, we have completed one path. So, along 10 you do not see any vertical if you see carefully along 10 I do not see any other peak. So, therefore, 10 is the last atom. So, it is stops there ok. So, it is like a train moving from one station to another station and it stops at the last station. Now, this was one pathway means one direction. Now, I can also go the way 1 to 6 to 5 to 10. So, let us start from there. So, this is from 2 ok. So, let us look from 2 onwards. So, 2 from 7, 7 to 9 and 7 should also to 8. 
So, if you see here we started from this 2, there are 2 peaks earlier we looked at 2 to 3 connection, now I am looking at 2 to 7 connection, then 7 to 7 vertically up, then it will branch out into 2 possibilities, one is 7 to 9, another is 7 to 8, that is what we see here. So, 7 to 9 connection and so essentially we are connecting all the peaks which are each next to each other, direct one bond. So, this is oh, complete this side. Now, we are still left with 1 to 6 this pathway which we did not see. So, that what is comes here. So, we start from 1 again remember 1 we had 2 peaks, 1 was this pathway, other is now this pathway 1 to 6, then 6 we go vertically up, you get this peak which is again 6 only because we are in the line of 6, but then if you go horizontal here it is a connection from 6 to 5, 6 to 5 and then now I expect 5 to 10. So, first I will go vertically on 5 and see wherever 5 is there. So, I can see that there is 5 here and then sorry we see a 5 here from here to here and then 5 to 10. So, 5 to 10 pathway is common. So, this 5 to this 5 to this 10 is same and this 5 to this 5 to this 10 is same. So, because 5 10 is finally a single connection whether you come like this or you come from other side there is no distinction. So, this is how this inadequate experiment works. Um, again, if it is we will look at the application of this later on in a real system where we will use this to calculate or we will use this to get the connection information. Uh, so, uh, so we will now we this brings actually to the end of all 2D experiments that we have looked at and we will just quickly summarize. So, what we looked at is homonuclear 2D experiments. So, we saw that the simplest experiment is 2D cosy which helps us to get information between two protons which are directly J coupled to each other. Usually that is coupling is either two bonds or three bonds and in literature in test books you will see many variants of 2D cosy and the very important covariant is called 2D DQF cosy double quantum filter which is exactly same or same information as cosy, but is much better than cosy. So, normally nowadays people do not do 2D cosy as such they do what is called DQF cosy information wise they are same, but the problem is 2D DQ of cosy is not sensitive, it is less sensitive. This is similar to like rosy and nosy which we saw depending on the sensitivity you can choose. Toxy is a very important experiment, we saw that it gives all the information about a spin system which is very useful. The spin system was we saw is a network of coupled spin means which are coupled to each at least one neighboring spin. And for structured determination we saw the important experiment of 2D nosy, where all protons which come close in space within 5 to 6 Armstrongs will show chemical shift correlation. And interestingly as I said just a mere presence of a cross peak between 2 atoms tells us that they are less than 6 Armstrongs. So, just a presence is enough to give some distance information. And then we saw that in the case of rosy, nosy does not work many times depending on your molecule and spectrometer frequency and in such cases we have to use rho z. So, this brings us to the end of 2D homonuclear NMR experiments. And now, we will move on to heteronuclear 2D experiments that is where we see chemical shift correlation between carbon and proton uh, and then that next that will be in the next week and when we will see how these two uh, homonuclear and heteronuclear together can be combined to get a complete structure determination uh, in of molecules.